Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Episode 14, that's Cator's for you Francophones out there. Co-host Porter Cunningham, joined as always by my good friend, colleague, co-host Will Bowersox. Will, say hello to the people. Greetings, people. It is a beautiful, balmy Tuesday night here in Oklahoma City. Got the Thunder Game on in the background, got the bourbons in the drink. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. And talking, talking one of my favorite sports teams, right? OKC. It's That's good right. It's good so night. you are listening to the Scissor Tail Podcast. We are going to start off with corrections and results, as we always do, as has become our standard. And uh, just one correction from last week. I incorrectly attributed the wonder goal that opened the scoring for Indy 11 to Ubi Pari Povich. The actual goal scorer was Yair Reynoso. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... Jar Reynosa. Jar Reynoso. Well, good on him. It was a great goal, and he can finally stop sending me mean tweets now about not getting him the right... correct. The right That's right. Point. That's right. Correction corrected. So, what happened uh, in the world of Rio last week, Will? Well, the team took a nice little uh, first week of a two-week jaunt out to Flo Rida. And we had a... Match against our hated rival, the Jacksonville Armada. And just as Sir Francis Drake vanquished the Spanish Armada by lighting boats on fire and sending them into their midst, Alan Marcina sat deep and defended and scored goals on the counter. So you might say that you would, con- you would instead of Sir Francis Drake, would you rather compare our strategy to Tyrion Lannister at the Battle of the Blackwater and uh, we, we, we allowed the Armada to enter the Blackwater Bay the Blackwater Rush rather and then we raised our giant chain and set them afire with dragon fire I think if you're going to use the Game of Thrones analogy like this is a great time to use it great awesome I used it so Porter Taught me one thing you liked and one thing you didn't like. Well, first, I should say we won 1-0. If you're listening, you probably knew that. Probably it should have been 2-0. Yeah, it should have been 2-0. We won 1-0. Ryo won 1-0, rather. I'm not, I'm not on the team. I don't play for the team. I should not say we. Uh, things I liked about the game. Giorgio Samaras getting his first start. So the flagship. He, did he? He 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 got subbed off, right? He did. Yeah. Okay. Early in the second half. I uh. So we didn't see much out of him. I didn't really notice a whole lot of of influence he had on the game. There but. was there was one combination where he was passing with the our new left back uh, Moses, Moses, and it it was promising. But yeah, I mean, I've noticed that Samaras likes to kind of drift over to the left-hand side of the field, and so that's certainly fine, but that's not my understanding of his role on the team. So, um, But I understand he's not perfectly fit yet, and I'm not giving him tactical instructions, so I don't, I don't know, but yeah. just my observation. Yep. What's well, something you didn't like? Uh, did not like... So let me say this correctly. We, we were at a watch party at Wingstop, which uh, is a great wing establishment. restaurant establishment in the Oklahoma City area. It's a national chain. It is a sponsor of Rio OKC. You, you'll notice their emblem on the back of the jerseys. So they hosted us, and they were a great host uh, for the game Saturday night. However, they need to upgrade their TVs. Uh, the TV feed, at least on the TV we were watching, lacking. Very poor. So. I was kind of hoping for audio. Do we have audio? Well, well it was not very to, loud. They had to turn the actual TV up. They couldn't turn the music off in the restaurant. Which like corporate bullshit. So, now, that being said, I just got an email earlier. The official watch party for this coming weekend is at In the Raw Bricktown. So, I think that'll be a little bit higher quality. Agreed. What did you like and what didn't you like about the game? Uh... What I didn't like was just the kind of maybe our mantra on the road is come out and play defense and hit them on the counter. So I didn't necessarily like that we weren't as open and attacking, but call it what you want. It got results, so so that's okay. 
Um, things that I did like, uh, uh, I had some delicious wings that were drenched in teriyaki sauce. We won. We won. That's awesome. Really glad we won. It made me very happy. Kept a clean sheet. Clean sheet. Uh, Danny no, played big. No injuries. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, uh, C's get degrees and defensive efforts get W's. So, I'm happy so, with it. But before we go too too much farther, I have a hypothetical question. for Well, not a hypothetical, a theoretical question for you. Why do you think, especially with a team like Rio OKC, they would play any different on the road than at home? Is there is there for a team like Rio a significant home advantage? All new players, they've only they've literally lived in Oklahoma for four months, five months. What's the difference in game day preparation from a road game to a home game? And do you think there needs to be a difference in strategy? That's a great question. You know, to the extent that they're a pretty new team, they still do get to play on in, in a familiar setting on a weekly basis from a training standpoint. So, you know, maybe there's just kind of the, the comfort of not having to travel, you know, three southwest legs to get to Jacksonville um, and not having to live in a hotel room for two weeks. So, and obviously I don't, I mean, some of these players are experienced, but as a team it's their first time to play together in these away venues, so there's probably some um, lack of familiarity, and one thing you probably want to avoid on the road is losing momentum too much and letting the game get away from you early. So, And look, I mean, to the extent that we're coming across as critical of the game plan, I mean, it worked, and, you know, call it what you want. So they got a W. What about you? Uh, no, I, I don't think... Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right. The game plan worked, but I don't know. I'm not a professional soccer player. I've never played in that setting. But to me, it would seem like a team this young doesn't have a great home advantage. Not n- Nothing against the fans that come out, but it's not like the Thunder playing in Oklahoma City versus San Antonio. So just something to think of. And just a small note, the team actually did come home. They came back after okay. the game. I didn't know that. They're here this week, and then they're flying out to Tampa Bay on Friday. I thought they stayed. No, they did okay. not stay. So even though I guess somebody ran the numbers about hotel rooms versus flights and figured it was better to come back home than stay out there for uh, a week and a half or whatever. So Cool. All right. Well, uh, good chat. That wraps up our quick recap of the Jacksonville game. We're going to uh, play a quick ad, and we'll come back and talk about uh, some of what we saw from the technical side of the Jacksonville match. So stay with us. We'll be right back. After making double bogey, don't add insult to injury by letting your unsecured stogie bounce on you. Ready to celebrate that birdie on number six with a puff off your Cohiba? Oh, wait, it fell out of the golf cart back on number four. Don't want to arrest your smoke on the turf with the chemicals and bugs? The Cigar Party is the solution for all problems. Its patented spring action clamp adjusts to gently secure smokes as small as a cigarette or as large as a 60 ring gauge cigar. It can also hold vapes and pipes. It mounts in almost any tea holder and has a sturdy base to stake in the turf when you're greenside or at the tea box. And it looks cool. Several prototypes and rounds of testing have proven that the Cigar Party will hold up to time and the elements. The injection molded design is 100% American made and is backed by a one year limited warranty. Order now to treat your smokes to a Cigar Party. Welcome back. Segment two now, episode 14, Scissor Tail Podcast. We're going to get into some tech talk, talking about Ryo OKC's. 1-0 victory on the road against Jacksonville Armada FC this last May 7th. Will, the team came out in a 4-3-3. Did you see, were you able to see enough from the broadcast we watched to make any astute observations about lineup, about the formation rather? Not really. Um, I wish I had had the chance to go back and you know, find a recording of the game, but maybe that's just a function of the environment we were in and the feed. But most of the environment, right, we were not sitting, like, up above in an aerial view. 
Uh, like I said earlier, I did notice that Samaras and Forbes kind of traded spots. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, I, I mean, I don't know that there's a – there wasn't a very complicated game plan. So um, I didn't really see a lot of shifting around, tactically speaking. I don't, I'm, I'm sure it happened, but – I think we have a podcast episode called The Host Mailed In, and to kind of feel like we mailed it in. We were just kind of enjoying the game as fans, watching at a watch party. Yeah, we definitely did mail it in in terms of covering this game. Now, it is recorded on my DVR at home, and I did go back and watch the goal and what should have been the second goal. Um, so let's talk about that, because totally against the run of play. I mean, Jacksonville dominated the game. From a possession standpoint, from a pass standpoint, tell me, tell us what we have for possession. I mean, it's ugly. Yeah, um, we Rio thirty three percent to Jacksonville's sixty six percent possession. Rio won duels and aerial duels. That makes um, sense though, because they were on the de- defensive all game, right? Uh, Thirteen corners to two for Jacksonville, and then if you look at passing. 576 passes for Jacksonville, too. Just a shade under 300 for Rio. So, um, I'll trade them that for no set-piece goals. Yeah, so no set-piece goals. Now, I will say that after the Miami game, there were potentially some similar statistics, and we were pretty quick to chalk that up to the weather and the pitch. And it might be more clear to us now that this is what we do on the road. Yeah. Yeah, which is were, fine. Which is fine. I mean, look, both of the both of our games that we won on the road, I thought were ugly, right? Yeah. And the games that we've lost or drawn at home were pretty open. So yeah. You tell me what you would do with that if you were the manager. Right. Yeah. I'm and I'm I'm completely okay with that. Let the team that you're playing at home think they're they're playing into a trap, right? Right. Let them think they're playing their game, and then. As soon as they leave that their chin hanging out there just far enough, you know, you come in with an uppercut. Put your nuts on it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not sure we can say that. Anyways, uh, you, you come in with an uppercut and you send Billy Forbes on a counter or a long Michelle cross into Robbie Finley. Let, let's talk about that, Michelle assist because that was freaking sweet he did not have hardly any time or space and it was like he took a touch looked up saw robbie and then immediately played it in i wish that i had that skill in life she's like oh i'm gonna do this right now and i know where it's gonna go i know it's gonna happen it's gonna work here i go i'm gonna do it i don't think i think you've actually mentioned that before on the podcast so yeah it's yeah it's uh, it's amazing what he can do how yeah. how good these guys are yeah so and then obviously it's been said more than once if you watch the game you saw it after some camera malfunctions we got the we we got a good look at both goalies asses for about 30 seconds and then really unfortunate timing and then all of a sudden there's Robbie Finley putting the ball in the back of the net again and the offside flag goes up I can't believe for a moment. There's no bad, way. Bad, okay, bad bad camera angles that we had. Didn't see the build up. Maybe there was a look, maybe there was a pass earlier on where Finley was I just there can't wasn't. imagine there wasn't. You saw the whole thing. I well, I rewatched it and uh onside the whole way and you could even use the six yard box because it was about eight yards out. You can use the six yard box to see where Billy is whenever he plays the ball across he actually megs the the uh jacksonville defender and then robbie just passes it in it should have been a second goal easy should have been two of and we about got caught out on the counter of that too so yeah i mean at that point the game i don't remember what minute that was in but that would have easily iced the game but then what happened is jacksonville got second life and and really almost put a couple in yeah huge plays by danny fernandez down the stretch he was man of the match, deservedly rightly so. so. Yeah, rightly so. Great, uh, you know, being big and and knocking away some of those headers and playing the ball out when he had to. No pants. No pants. He wore shorts. You know, I wonder if that's a turf thing for him. I wonder if he's always going to wear pants on turf and shorts on grass. I understand the logic. I'm okay with that. 
He yeah. was wearing the gray, uh, the gray jersey again, which, like I said, I'm going to get. Well, actually, speaking of, of clean sheep, and we did make some changes in the defensive lineup. So, uh, gone was Van Schaik in favor of Moses Hernandez, a left back. I thought it was a quiet game on the, the left-turn front. Yeah. Which is fine. Hernandez looked okay. Which is what forward. you want with your outside backs, right? No doubt. No doubt. Uh, I Rashawn McKenzie was on the bench in favor of one in, one on. Uh-huh. Uh, Foddy Donzo and Kimura on the other side. That's su- surprising to me. I thought that McKenzie was kind of rock solid, and from what I've seen, Foddy Donzo is a little bit shaky when it comes to, like, playing around and potentially making mistakes, but I'm not the coach, so whatever. And uh, certainly the, the talk of the match on the defensive front for Raya, but it's not Danny, was... Kosuke's shorts. Yes. What is up with that? The shrinking shorts. So, they're short to start out with. He likes the short shorts. I don't know if you can buy them that way. If he just buys a size, two sizes too small. He definitely, actually has them hemmed. He definitely rolls them up. But as they, it's more than rolling them up. As the game goes on, they like shrink. Like the rainbow goes away. And then all you can see eventually is just the badge and the number it's pretty hilarious. It's a confusing habit, to say the least. And I asked the Flacco Gloss guys on Twitter because he played for the, the Colorado Rapids. Beloved fan icon of, of their championship winning team. Yes, and, and Flacco Gloss guys, were when they were at the Indy game, stayed around and actually talked to Koske for a little bit. Very nice. Uh, and so I asked him... Did he have shrinking shorts at Colorado? And they said, why, actually, yes. We never really thought about it, but he did. So, uh, one question for you on the back four. Why do you think Wanon got the start? You know why I think he got the start. Well, has Wanon played before Mm-mm. this year? Well, yes, yes. He's not a rookie. He's No, a... sorry, sorry. Before this game. Yes. No, this was the first time we've seen him. Well, maybe there's some fitness. Um... Is your hypothesis that there's a ease of communication? Exactly. I thought uh, being new to the team, Moses but Hernandez. I, I don't know that I agree with that because Rashawn McKin- wouldn't Footy Donzo and Rashawn McKenzie have played together in Portland? Potentially. But potentially, but uh, wouldn't you rather your goalkeeper be able to talk to your brand new left back than your two center backs talk to each other? I don't know. Yeah, I, look, I think there's credence to it. Because Danny, um, then Danny can talk to Moses and one on. They can all three talk to each other on the left. And then one on and Danny can turn around. I don't know how good Moses' English let's is. Let's definitely but. keep an eye on it moving forward because I, I was intrigued for sure by the switch. Yeah. So uh, injury update. Uh, we saw the return of one Sebastian Velasquez to the side. Great to see. Great to see. Thought he didn't have a major impact, but he looked – I mean – Definitely wasn't a non-factor. I seem to remember a a pretty good run he had kind of down the right side later in the game, but I would had I had many. He's someone who was in Shiner Box by that point. He's someone on our side that whether we're holding, well, when we're on the break, I want him with the ball at his feet leading it. So, uh, Robbie Finley, after sitting out the last match as well, came back. I believe played the full 90. No, no, he subbed on for Giorgio Samaras is what I found out in our last break. Okay. So he came on for Samaras. Fog fog of war. That's okay, yeah. You had also had multiple Shiner Box by that point. so Follow us in Untapped. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So, yeah, he subbed on for Samaras, and that was evidently a key sub because goal scorer and should have been second goal scorer. So Yeah. No Marvin Chavez still. He parted ways with the team, right? Or is that Norales? That's Eric Norales. Why? Well, they said his part of ways with the team. Franco tweeted that, but he was still on the game day roster. Not on the 18, but still on the full team roster. So, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we have a bullet point here for heat maps and off to jack talk. Um, Anything we, to we discuss? We did it. Uh, off to jack is freaking sweet, by the way. Talk amongst yourselves while I pull up the heat map. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know that the Opta service is across leagues. Like the one in Germany for the Bundesliga is called Opta Franz, I think, or it's Opta Hans. It's pretty awesome. It's hard to really look at a heat map. 
I mean, the heat map tells the same story that the stats just told us earlier, which is Jacksonville played in our half a lot. Yeah. yeah. When we when we when we played in their half, it was down the wings. So. All right. Yeah. Not a whole lot more to add there. Cool. Okay. Well, we are going to take a quick break. We will play you the soothing sounds of an advertisement. When we return, we will talk about the preview amongst the Tampa Bay Rudies. Porter, I don't know about you, but if there's one thing I love about an independent sports franchise that I am a fan of, it's the chance to wear fan-sourced apparel as a means of kind of displaying the team's culture. Yeah, because what if the team that you support just doesn't have the apparel out there that you want to wear. For whatever reason, perhaps they've just been worrying about putting a team on the field instead of marketing or uh, you know making cool t-shirts. They haven't had the chance to, but you still want to support that team, right? Yeah, and look, I'm not trying to wear Pittsburgh Steelers football pants. You know, I want to wear a t-shirt, yeah. for instance. So, yeah. Where would you go if you wanted to wear some fan source cultural t shirts for Rio OKC? I know exactly where I'd go. Scissor tail tees. Huh. Huh. Oh wow. Look at that. Wow. These are cool. Well I just went to www.teespring.com slash stores slash scissor tail tees and there's a bunch of awesome t shirts. Yeah, what's this say? Blood and Thunder. What? Rock and roll football. These guys must be hardcore. Yeah. I'm going to order some of these right now. We're back. Segment three. Scissor Tail Podcast, episode 14. We're looking ahead now to the next Ryo OKC game, which happens to be this coming Saturday, May 14th, against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Hated rival of Ryo. This one's going to be fierce. Yes. In Tampa Bay, Florida, kicks off at 6 o'clock Central Time. This game can be seen in the Oklahoma City Metro on Cox Channel 703, ESPN3, Will... Do you have any initial thoughts about the game against Tampa Bay? I just can't see any way we don't win by like nine goals. <laughs> Going on past precedent, we will win this game <laughs> because we've won our other two road games. Yeah. We're going to beat that ass. So, uh, a little bit more seriously, Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, give you a little bit of breakdown on them. I've talked about this before. I'm in love with their stadium. Al Lang, the converted baseball stadium. Let me stop you right there. Okay. It is not the coolest stadium in America. I see that as a topic of discussion for it. It is the coolest stadium in America. It's in a bullet point right there. With a question what mark. What stadium in America is coolest? Cooler. I don't know. The Seattle you Seahawks. You can't even think of one. The Seattle Seahawks. Oh, your run-of-the-mill stadium. That is just... What's it look like? It's got no cool... The Hawks Nest. The 12th man. All right, just go be a Sounders fan, why don't you? <laughs> anyway, we're it's think- a cool stadium. Like Jacksonville, it's a converted baseball stadium, yes. Yes, but this, but this is permanently converted. Jacksonville goes back and forth, hence their shoddily laid sod on the, on the turf there. But this is no longer a baseball stadium. It's not, baseball's not played on this field at all anymore. Good. Just soccer. So... Uh, a couple of notes for you about the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Hit us. There is a big, big name player on the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and it's not one that just signed this last week. Freddie Adu. Yes. Freddie Adu is on the Tampa Bay Freddy Rowdies. Freddie Adu? Yeah, exactly. Because I think he's been on the team for, I think it was all last year. He's had a pretty crazy, he's had a Will Bowersox-esque career trajectory where he's lived in like nine different ca- I'm, I should cut that out. He said he's lived in like nine different countries and played in like eight, ten different teams in that span in like the last nine seasons. Something ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I feel kind of bad for the guy since he was sure. like the face of the future of U.S. soccer. Which, by the way, I don't know that out. he wasn't proclaiming himself that. Maybe he was. Right. That was a kickball, by the way. Oh. Definitely. 
anyway, sorry, that was a comment on the Thunder Spurs game that's happening right now. Uh, another big name Ju- that was just signed for Tampa Bay. Who's that? Joe Cole. Was he, is he? What does he join the team? The English defender just joined today. So unfortunately, they said he was going to fly out last week, and I was kind of hoping he would be in the eleven or at least come on as a sub this Saturday. But I don't think it's going to happen. So the noted uh, Chelsea, former Chelsea West Ham player, won the champion, won the Premier League with Chelsea. Um, going to be really cool to see him play in the NSL. Yeah, I think. Do you know how old he is? Is this your run of the mill Premier League player that's coming over for a retirement lap? I'll tell you in two seconds. Hold on. Google is Googling. He's 34. So, so yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's Joe Cole. Yeah. So, hey. So, some other players to actually watch out for on Tampa Bay Tom Heineman is uh, kind of a big guy. Big curly hair. Watch out for him. Their goalkeeper, Matt Pickens, is pretty good. Saved a penalty earlier on this season. So, interesting to see how he plays against Ryo. And very interested to see if we're right about our hypothesis on how the team plays road games. Unfortunately, I don't think either one of us will be able to watch it live. Yeah, what are you going to be doing Saturday night? I'll be at a wedding. I will be at my younger sister's graduation from the great University of Oklahoma. Let's hang out on Sunday and watch the replay. Uh, can somebody out there tell us if we can get a replay on ESPN3? That'd be awesome. We can go to my mom's place. I'll make her record it. I'm in. So- Mom, the meatloaf! <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I guess uh, quick apologies again. We don't, we don't have uh, a compelling breakdown for Tampa Bay, but... I haven't exactly watched him play before. So that's our MO now. That's our MO now. Get used to it for the whole rest of the spring season. But we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with free talk. And we'll wrap this episode up and send it to where it belongs on the interwebs. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Episode 14, Scissor Tail Podcast. We're in our final segment of the episode, our free talk segment. Will, I did something I have not ever done yesterday when I thought we were going to record last night. I sent out the call for questions on the old Twitter, which is at ScissorTailPod, by the way. You also could have emailed us at ScissorTailPod at gmail.com. But I did get three questions. All right. So I'd like to try to answer those, and then I will have something else I want to talk about. Okay. Okay. So the first question comes from uh, Independent Clubs at Open Cup Fan. Why would anyone support a farm team when they have the choice of their own independent club? Thanks. Hashtag ProRail for USA. It is ProRail Week. That sounds like a loaded question that I'm not 100% positive we're the best people to answer. Because what... I like this guy, by the way. I like his tweets. But... What he's referencing is the USL affiliation with the MLS from a minor league standpoint, and specifically referencing the soccer wars angle in Oklahoma, USL versus NASL, which you probably have heard us talk about some on this podcast. So from the standpoint of the energy being an affiliate team, which is true, and Rio OKC being a, quote, independent team, I don't know that I would... I mean, we're majority owned by a team in La Liga. I would say I, it's clear which which camp I'm in because oh, likewise, I'm part of this. Well, I mean, part li- of this. likewise. However, I would say that I would say that the energy is just as independent as Rio, if not more so. Mm, I mean, that's probably fair, because right? we're majority. Rio is majority owned by. Someone in another league, we're not clear affiliates, but independent club is, I would say, they are independent. They could do whatever they want. They don't need to have an affiliation. Well... But to answer the question... Okay. To answer the question, because we, we can discuss that in a future Is it... Episode. Sorry, is there a soccer... Let's talk about that in baseball. Exactly. Let's talk That's about what that. I was going to do. Okay, let's yeah, talk about yeah, that in yeah. baseball. So, is there anybody who goes to an Oklahoma City Dodgers game 
because they love the Oklahoma City Dodgers. I I strongly doubt it. Or do they go to the Oklahoma City Dodgers game because they loved the Oklahoma City Red Hawks and they loved the Oklahoma City 89ers and they just love baseball and they're just there to see baseball. That's definitely it. Or they love tracking player development. Yes. I don't think... And I, I think... The Oklahoma City Dodgers, that serves no heartstrings. Right. Right. None. Right. So... But if we were talking about watching the sport at the highest level, or with the potential to be at the highest level, it's a different conversation. We're both staunchly for promotion and relegation in American soccer. Let's get that straight. Okay. Let's not beat this horse any more than we yeah. have. What's okay. the next question? All right. Next question. Uh, Ryo specific songs chance. Don't have any. Need some. Get Ryo's Red Army on the case. Now this is... Who, who, who tweeted that? Tobias the monkey. Okay. He's I, a sock monkey. Also like this guy. We've had some back and forth. I don't know who he is. He's a sock monkey. Right. <laughs> He's got great... I don't know how he skills. types without fingers, but somehow he does. Well, it is frustrating... Speech to text, probably. It, <laughs> it is frustrating that we hear the same, like, let's go, Ryo, chants. But I know that there are that there is like a songbook that's literally been not not literally been written, but there is a lot of chants that have been written that like get emailed around and they're good and they're entertaining. I have fun. one. I'd like to do one right now. Yeah, that's okay with you. It. It's more of a song than a chant. Do it. Okay. Michelle, 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 Michelle. With that left foot, he'll put it top shelf. Michelle, okay. Michelle, no, 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 Michelle, Michelle, when the ball goes in, you'll shit yourself. <laughs> and if that has not been sung at a Ryo home game, I don't know why not, because that's a great chant, it's a great song to do on corners, on free kicks. Do you think the falsetto might cause people some problems? Uh, Is the falsetto required? I'm sorry, they should be practicing at the tailgate. They should be practicing at the tailgate. Yeah, look, Tobias, great question. Ryo's Red Army, we know you have the, the arsenal of, of songs. Let's hear them. Yes, let's okay. hear it. Let's ne- hear it. Next question. Third and final question. Beer in the stadium, but not outside. Beer on the podcast? And this was asked by uh, Gorilla Talk, Paul with Gorilla Talk, at ATL Gorilla Talk. Right. Okay, a uh, couple questions in there. Beer on the podcast... Sure. Sometimes we mostly drink the brown stuff, right? Because that's just what we have available, right? We've got oh, we've got some of the hard stuff here, so that's what we stick to. We've been known to have a Guinness or two before we record. True. Okay. Uh, beer in the stadium, but not outside. That references the, our, our quote unquote try, dry tailgate that we had last week. Yeah the the beer garden is up and running. Yes. Beers were certainly enjoyed at the tailgate before. Yeah, I think there was a lot of misconception about that, and we kind of talked about it last week. But everyone said, don't drink any beer at the tailgate. Don't have beer at the tailgate. The sheriff's going to be out. They're going to arrest you on site. Well, we experimented at that, and we, in fact, uh, did consume one alcoholic beverage at the tailgate once the coast was clear. So I think going forward, they're not going to really worry about it all that much. I guess we'll the, see. I guess the analogy is just like what people think. We we don't drink during before the game, but do drink at the game via the beer garden. No, we don't drink before the podcast. We do drink during the podcast. But we have drank before the podcast before. <laughs> yeah. I could without risking the sheriff coming in and messing with me. Right. Okay. okay, all right, all right. So, uh, what else to discuss? Good and good questions. I think I like that. I think I'm going to do that from now on. Cool. Uh, to 20, 48 hours before we record or such, even if we get ridiculous questions, I would love to answer them. One other thing I want to talk about, the U.S. Open Cup starts tomorrow. Yes. The U.S. Open Cup, the oldest tournament in the United States of its kind, of any kind, Sporting tournament. something like that. Do you have any thoughts about the Open Cup? I think it's awesome. 
And will you be following any games tomorrow? Uh, only casually at best. Yeah, you will be traveling tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a hard day for sports travel, for yep. sports knowledge. Yep. Um, but I love it. I think it's. I have never actually followed it before, but. Look, the obvious storyline everyone wants to talk about is last year the USL went like 7-0 and against the NASL. So we're not at that round yet where those two teams, where those two leagues meet, but we'll be curious to keep an eye on that statistic. So tomorrow is just NPSL and PDL teams. And I believe the winner of those games move on, the winners of those games move on to play uh, USL teams. And if there's not enough USL teams to fill those spots, another NPSL or PDL team. And then the winners of those games will play NASL teams. And then the winners of those games will play MLS teams. And then that will be the entire field. So, nice, interesting to see. Really quickly, a side comment related to that. Did you read the article about Stockade FC? I did. The NPSL team Great in upstate article. New York. Great article. Yes. I, uh... Got the wheels spinning. I, I am not going to commit to starting an NPSL team in Oklahoma <laughs> City, but I'm really am looking forward to seeing his his financial deck and all that stuff. I read that whole article, and all I saw was you only need fifty grand to start an NPSL team. Let's get the credit cards. So uh, I've got well, but it's a nonprofit, and they're not paying the players. Right. So screw the players. Screw the players. Uh, Great article. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't read it, go out and read it. Google Stockade FC. I'm Dennis sure the Crowley. article. It's yeah, the, it's the guy behind Foursquare. Yep. Great article. So US Open Cup starts tomorrow. Big deal. Lots to look forward to if you're a soccer fan in the US. And uh, that's all I've got. Vamos a Rio. Let's go Rio. Big game against Tampa Bay. We'll be back next week to talk about that and to preview our next home game. Which is against... Who is it against? Is it against the Cosmos? Fort Lauderdale Strikers. <laughs> Which is against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. To round out our Florida connection. Hate, the hated... The hated Fort Lauderdale. Hated rivals. Alright, well hey, thank you all for listening. One more time. Scissortail Pod on Twitter. At, at gmail.com. And we will catch you next week. Stay frosty.